Welcome to the Ask Weldon Show, episode 271, Conditioning a New Teammate, Practicing League of Legends, and Comforting Friends. Thanks for tuning in today. So we have four questions, two from Stephen from Brooklyn, New York, as you'll hear, and then uh, one from Chris and one from a Rocket League player, which I'm very excited to get to. Uh, I'll get into the announcements after the first question, so why don't we just jump right into it? Hey, Walden. This is Steven from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I just want to share a recent experience I had and kind of see what your take is on it. Um, So one of my good friends broke down today at our university campus over stress uh, in school. And uh, a couple of friends of ours, as well as myself, uh, we spent an hour uh, there just to comfort them. Uh, But all this time, they sort of pushing us away and urging us to leave them al- leave them alone and kind of give them space to process their thoughts and i we just thought that it wasn't the right choice and so we wanted to be there with for our friend and so that's what we chose to do i just want to see uh what your take is on it any advice you have for anyone who comes up or has a similar uh situation thanks yeah, thank you for your question. Uh, so there's no way that I can answer that in a general uh, answer on the internet in terms of whether or not you should do it. That is a question that you have to make. That is a call you have to make on the ground, boots on the ground, right there in the moment. Um, both of those answers could be right, whether comforting a friend who is in need doesn't want it or not comforting a person who is in need and doesn't want it. Um, there, It's a little bit dicey to talk about in terms of mental health, whether or not you should be with somebody who who is undergoing some emotional trauma so let's just say that there are for my answer what i'm going to tell you is that there are better ways to do it and there are ways you can improve doing it if you decide to do it against somebody else's wishes uh and i'll get into like the 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 main reasons that people don't want somebody there within their sadness or trauma is number one they don't feel worthwhile so you being there is essentially making them feel even worse because they feel like they don't deserve your uh, effort. And for that, you can very logically argue against it and use uh, one of the best ways to cope with that is to essentially can tell them otherwise with logic. And they might continue to protest, but their brain cannot unhear the arguments that you're saying. You know, if you're saying like, no, the, you're a worthwhile friend to me because of these reasons, and this is what I want to do, because, and this is how it benefits me. So it's logical that I would want to do this, and this is what I would be otherwise spending the time doing, which isn't something that I'm interested in. So like, this is, this is, and, and, being here is something that I want to do as well. It's not just serving you. It's also helping me like, um, to make sure that I, like you feel good and I feel good about you feeling good or not feeling good. Um, like I would feel even worse if I left. So there's, so you can present all of these logical arguments that kind of like help them to understand that, uh, this is a choice that you're making and it's not an indication of their worth or lack of worth. Um, and then, and I recommend being logical about that, not overly emotional not being like, oh, no, no, you so are, you so are, you so are, but like explaining why, right? Because uh, the brain the brain is going to come up, her, his or her brain is going to come up with all these reasons. And the best way to contradict that is to es- essentially contradict their self-talk. And that is when you need to provide your own kind of uh, narrative that goes in there. The second reason that people, uh, another reason that people don't want to be comforted is because they feel judged so they feel like a judgmental focus on them and that they're acting in a certain way that they don't necessarily uh, want to be the identity of who they are to you. And then they are feeling um, like they don't want you to be seeing the part that they're playing uh, at the moment. And there's a way to reassure them about that. Uh, basically explain to them who you who they are in your eyes. Like I see you as the kind of person this and this and this and this. And this is how I've seen you and this is the kind of person that you are and this is the kind of person you appear to me to me appear to be to me and um through that they kind of see that like okay maybe this one moment of this one experience isn't going to define who i am to this person but i'm a collection of like all of my previous interactions with them and and i'll I'll do other things in the future with this person and and it doesn't it isn't defined by this moment so you can essentially what i'm saying is that you can do this uh, if you choose to do it you can do it better and, and you can take some of these tactics there are then a myriad of other reasons why people wouldn't want somebody to comfort them that you can mitigate 
uh, by just being better at it. So I would reflect on the experience you had, the things that worked and didn't work, maybe even ask the person that you were with what what was great and what was not great about that encounter. Um, and uh, kind of step forward in your role as a counselor to a higher skill level of counseling. Um, and that doesn't mean you're ever going to get people that don't protest and that still don't want you around them. Uh, but if you make that call and decide to be there anyway and comfort them, then doing it better or doing it worse is a worthwhile endeavor. All right. And then, like I said, I'm not going to say whether or not it was right or wrong to to comfort people against their wishes. I think that, that is uh, something you need to make a call on a case-by-case basis. And sometimes you need an expert to make that call as well, which is not me on the internet playing psychologist to you and your friends. So uh, best of luck. And let's get into your second question. Oh, wait, first announcements. Yes, uh, you can submit a pod, uh, question for the show. This is a podcast that you can access on anchor.fm slash Weldon Green. And on that link, you will find a, uh, the audio uh, collections of this show going all the way back 271 episodes plus the first season of 10 episodes edited up by Sam Han. I hope that I'm getting his last name right now. I just realized I haven't checked on that in a few years. Uh, and you can also submit your question. You can find the the collection of podcasts on Spotify all the way through from Spotify through Apple Podcasts and everything in between. And then you can also click a little message button and send your own uh, question into the show, whereupon I will answer it. And the other announcement is that uh, we are up to essentially eight days, five of which happened at 11 o'clock. So if you want to check out the show live, make sure when you're watching this on YouTube to tune in at 11 a.m. Uh, Los Angeles time on Twitch. Try to get the live episode out. And as you can see, there's a lot of people here in the chat. Well, actually, you can't see, but there are a lot of people here in the chat who are asking questions sometimes throughout the show. And then I get to them after the show. So we have a nice lively discussion on the points of refinement to these questions that they want to hear or on deeper points that I may have mentioned, or on things that are just tangential and their own topic uh, and own questions. So it's kind of like your own tailored personal version of an Ask Weldon show or performance psychology podcast, and you get it hopefully every weekday, uh, right before the World of Warcraft stream, whereupon I am gearing up my main tanks for the first raid to be launched in a week's time, Castle Nathria, and then for the Mythic Plus season. Uh, So... Yeah, that's what's happening in the stream after the show. All right, let's get into the second question. Hey, Walden. This is Steven from Brooklyn, New York. A while back, I bought your Mac program and tried it out for about a week or so, but lost adherence to it. Uh, It was mainly due to a lack of motivation at the time, uh, as well as it was difficult for me to uh, see or feel the progress with uh, mindfulness training. Uh, in regards to my performance, because I would always feel like I I was in a lull state or being distracted by other thoughts. Uh, But I do want to give it another shot, and I want to see if uh, you have any advice for people, I guess, coming back into it, uh, what to improve for next time. Uh, And shout out to the show. I recently just found out that your podcasts are on Spotify, so I'm able to watch more on my commutes. Uh, Thanks for all your content, and yeah, keep up the good work. Thanks. Uh, Steven, thank you. This is great. I usually do an ad here for the Mac program, so uh, I don't even need to. And you just echoed my ad for the podcast, so I don't know how much I owe you, but uh, hit me up for that. (laughs) Uh, So the the Mind Games, the Mac program he's referring to is the Mind Games program, which is now becoming the Mind Games app. You can still access the Mac program inside the Mind Games app. It's it's 49 videos kind of off to the side uh, within the app, and then the app is becoming the appified version of that. Uh, And you can access it now, although it's not a one-time price it is now a subscription price, but it's much less per month or per three month. So um, if you want to get into the beta, make sure to check out mindgames.gg. And your problem is exactly the reason that for years I have been trying to save up in order to develop an app. My opinion of learning and behavior change is that many of the online courses and settings for self-improvement are geared around the idea of targeting people who are already motivated. If you're already motivated to go and do the material and make the change in your own life, that's great. Then you can change for the better. But what about, that's like a very narrow slice of people because in the, in the, uh, like the ecological view of 
um, behavior change, you have these stages that you go through. Uh, this is just like a, not, I don't want to say a paltry way of thinking about it, but a, a simplistic way of thinking about it. You go in this phase of uh, pre-contemplation where you don't even know that you have a problem and then contempl- um, awareness of the problem. So then you know that you have a problem and you're contemplating changing it. And then preparation where you're planning to change your behavior. And then you have the actual change phase where you're actually changing your behavior and then you have the maintenance phase upon after uh, during which you're essentially maintenancing your new behavior and then it kind of like repeats and you can drop out at any point you can go into that that cycle at any point and this is this this uh kind of like theorized cycle of of behavioral change and there are people in every single one of those slices but online courses that are in video format for example only target people who are kind of like after the planning stage going into the the actual adaptation stage, which is a very thin, narrow margin of people, and all of the self-motivation to actually do it and go through pre-contemplation, contemplation, planning, and maintenance is kind of all on you. And that is not how I was raised as an educator, where I was essentially teaching in classrooms, like college classrooms, and that is not an acceptable attrition rate. You can't just teach to the people in the classroom who are like motivated at that time to do the work. Your job as a teacher is to bring up the is to get every single one of those kids through the material, whether they're motivated or not, and whether they're interested or not, whether they're in pre-contemplation to knowing about the pilgrims and the Santa Maria, or whether they're in like maintenance phase of that information. Uh, it's to get them through the, the class and to be educated and to grow. So uh, there's a myriad of different tools that are used by educators to help people along those routes of epiphany, um, self-realization, desire to start learning, planning for the learning, doing the learning, and then maintenancing the learning. Uh, or the new behaviors that they're incorporating into their their professional work. Um, and all of those can be accomplished digitally more readily through an application. So my advice to you is don't be hard on yourself when you fall out of an online video course, because that means that you just are not in the phase of actively changing your behavior, uh, which is related to motivation and time and circumstance and motivation of course is an emotion therefore it fluctuates up and down and it's dependent on a lot of things like barriers uh or lack of barriers um in terms of and also drive uh levels of satisfaction in your life there's just a there's just a bajillion things that go into it so um i would say like in specific answer to your question try to look at reflectively at your life and see where you are in terms of your behavior change. And then if you're in a stage where you're highly motivated and you're on the horse, go back into the class and just start doing it from exactly where you left off. Don't go start over. Uh, and then if you're, if you are not, then you can work on understanding the phase that you're in and how it is that you adjust and manipulate your own motivation and self perception to get things done. And if it's something that you want to do, then eventually you're going to do it. Uh, and if you don't do it, that means you didn't want to do it, which also is not necessarily a bad thing, by the way. Uh, and then and then also to kind of look at the tools that are starting to be incorporated into the app as a way of uh, understanding the levers that I'm going to try to use to pull people uh, into these from these other phases and, and move them to the next one, right? Going from pre pre-contemplation to contemplation. That's kind of done through the Twitch stream and the YouTube video, videos, right? Where I'm like le- making people aware of things that they didn't even know were possible. And then they're like, oh, wow, I didn't know that that could be possible. Let me try that. Uh, then the planning phase where they're like kind of like getting into it. And the maintenance phase, which is just as important where I haven't coded this into the app yet. But the idea is that we're going to have like a long breadcrumb trail of the ability to send you content and notifications that will help you in your maintenancing of new behaviors. So anyway. That's all an answer to a very complex, uh, convoluted, and multi-track answer to your simple question, which is how do you get back into Mac? And the answer is you just open it up to the last video that you were on and you push play and don't worry about anything else. All right, make it as simple as possible and remove every single barrier. And if you don't, if you can't get into the login, uh, DM me and I will, uh, you should be grandfathered in so I can send you um, the link to use for the code so that you can uh, buy an account for the new app at the price of $0 because you're grandfathered in by purchasing the previous Mac program. Let's jump into question number three from, I don't know how to pronounce this name, so maybe he pronounces it. Oh, oh, wait, no, I have a short little question from Chris first. Here we go. How to practice in League of Legends and how to review what I learned. 
All right, great. That was easy. Uh, boy, if everybody sent their questions in so succinct. I'm just kidding. I do like the storytelling as well. Uh, thank you, for Chris, for that question. And boy, I can answer this from a number of different perspectives. And that's why I like people to tell me their context, because then I can answer it directly to them. But basically, how do you review League of Legends? And then, oh, excuse me, got to get some coffee. And then uh, make sure that you know what you learned. Um, you need a mirror and a model. This is the this is the thing that I always go back to explaining is you need a mirror of your own play. So you have to watch your VODs, which means you need to record them. And then you need to watch them after you play them. And then you need a model of the person that you're trying to play like that you have in your head that you see in comparison to what you're doing when you're watching your mirror. So that is what like a pro streamer or somebody who uh, somebody's um, pro pro view uh, during the League of Legends competitive season. Um, and you just look at those things together. You watch your VOD, then you watch some pro VODs, and then you come up with ideas of things that you want to try that you see them doing that you understand all of a sudden and, and realize that you can't do. And then you go tempt them and you look at your own VOD and you see, oh, wow, I didn't even come close on that. I don't know why I just got yawn contagion. Uh, but anyway, it's spreading. I feel like it feels like the plague in my room uh, coming out in yawn form. But yeah, that's that's the, the basics of how you do it. So I can answer more in detail when I have more context, but that's the first step. Let's jump into the final question of the show. Hi, Walden. Sprightly Squirrel here. I'm a Hi, Rocket Sprightly League Squirrel. player trying to get ready for a large 3v3 qualifier tournament. I have a potential new teammate I'd like to play with, but he's very, very good at 2v2, much better than myself. This is Rocket League. And I'm anyway. worried that his 3v3 game style is unrefined. How should I move forward and get prepared for this tournament, including finding a third player? Thank you. Okay, so finding a third player, I don't really have any advice for. Um, I'm sure there's ways of doing that. Discord communities, high-level streams, uh, high-ranked gameplay on the ladder. If there is a ladder in Rocket League, I'm not even sure. And Sourcing people out, sharing your own content of how it is that you train and, and attracting people who want to play with you, etc., etc. Um, as far as like, uh, convening with a new teammate and you want to confront him about his problems in 3v3, but you think that he's probably better than you at 2v2 and is going to resent you giving him a hit of advice, I would just have a frank conversation with him. Be like, man, you are just really freaking good at this. You're on fire. Like, you're so good at that. And just praise him and say like, oh, I have some ideas for 3v3. I feel like, uh, there's things that you don't do well in the 3v3 compared to the 2v2. Um, and uh, it takes a different kind of mindset. Uh, in my opinion. So what do you think of this advice? Um, yeah, I mean, the only way around those situations is, is either to treat them like a diva and try to, try to, you know, satiate their appetite for self-perception that they are good and then correct them softly uh, and convince them logically through what you want to do or you just go to them as a person and you explain your point of view. Uh, and they accept it or they don't. If they don't accept it, then you can have a short-term teammate <laughs> that might not turn into a long-term teammate, or they could become a good friend and start to take your advice after they lose a, lose a few games. Uh, sometimes you literally need people to lose before they're willing to listen, and that's just a process you have to go through uh, as a coach a lot. Uh, you, you, like lo losing teaches people, right? It corrects their assumptions um, and makes them more open to ideas that are not just originating in their own brain and then uh and then sometimes uh it just uh it's just not, not gonna work out that's kind of like up to the relationship that you have as you build it so good question hard for me to answer without knowing more uh, about teammate and the problems that you or that you may or may not have with them and i wish you the best hope that you, the tournament went well it's probably over by now since this question came in a while ago I am working, by the way, through the backlog of questions, and we have, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 left. So we have about the rest of this week, and then I'm going to need people to start submitting their questions, so please stick them on the, on the top of the pile, and we'll get to them by next Monday. And then eventually, we'll hopefully get to them by the next day if we catch up completely how exciting will that be all right that's the show for today thank you for tuning in make sure to check us out live on twitch.tv slash mindgames weldon uh, make sure to check out my app mindgames.gg 
uh, I say app, it's a progressive web app, which means it's basically installable on your phone by saving as a website, and then it will be able to pull its uh, content offline. So it actually works and functions offline, very similar to an app that is installed on your phone, except that it doesn't actually install. So it's very light, very native and very fluent, like the light Twitter app uses an extremely small amount of data to accomplish what it's doing in a very elegant way. So yeah, uh, I'm kind of more excited right now about the architecture of the app than I am about the actually what's going on inside, which means I probably need to get into making more content since we're stuck on one week there still. Um, now that I have more space and more time in this house uh, that is silent, I can probably get some stuff recorded. Let's give it a shot. But yeah, I will see you guys next time.